The Me Too movement is calling attention to sexual harassment and rape culture nationally. In a recent study by the Pew Research Center, 44% of Americans say they have received unwanted sexual advances, verbal or physical harassment of a sexual nature. About 59% of women say they have experienced this, while 27% of men say the same. Philadelphia City Controller Rebecca Reinhardt released a performance audit back in July of 2018. It covers the city's sexual harassment misconduct policies and procedures. It shines a light on sexual harassment and misconduct occurring throughout our city government and also raises questions as to whether the city has truly been doing enough to protect its employees and itself from financial liability. If you had no idea about this audit, don't worry, you're not alone. But we wanted to see if people even knew what the controller does. Do you know what the city controller does? No. Do you know what the city controller does? No, not a clue. We sat down with the city controller to learn more about what she does and to find out more about the recent audit. The controller's job is to make sure that tax dollars are spent efficiently and effectively so that every dollar that people pay, that businesses pay in, is used to provide the best service as possible. And um, that's, that's my job for both uh, all city functions as well as the school district. Rebecca says that performance audits can have a pretty big impact on Philadelphians. Millions of dollars can be identified, which could be put towards other uses, such as schools or roads. And that's where I think the city controller uh, can have a big impact on people's lives, because I can find money that's being misspent, and then we can put it towards things that matter. Rebecca says that the audit was created in part by the Me Too movement, but it was also fueled by local allegations of sexual harassment the outgoing uh, or the then executive dire director Vince Fennerty was accused of multiple um, counts of sexual harassment and misconduct. He was forced out, um, but that was one example of this happening. There were claims of sexual misconduct at the sheriff's office against the sheriff. And then in December 2017, right before I took office, the city paid out $1.25 million for one case, and it was sexual assault of a police commander um, against a female subordinate in the police department. And um, that commander is, is still to this day on the job, even though the city paid out 1.25 million. And to me, I thought, wow, this is an area where it seems like something's not right. It seems like the city's not doing everything it can do to protect its employees which is causing uh, a financial burden. And if the city's paying out for repeat offenders, for example, and then not doing anything about it, that's creating a financial liability. In order to have workers feel protected, we need to have a centralization and then discipline schedule so that people feel safe and that discipline is fair um, to both uh, the the person coming forward with the complaint and also those being accused. I'm here today to testify on bill number 171109, which will place a charter change question on the May ballot to provide for mandatory annual training for all city employees regarding sexual harassment in the workplace. First, I'd like to thank Councilwoman Reynolds Brown for her leadership on this issue. For too long, sexual harassment in the workplace has been a taboo subject. A whispered warning. Philadelphia City Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds Brown helped to spearhead this change to the charter, and she provided a statement that says, in part, I'm very pleased that citizens across Philadelphia recognize the importance of changing the city charter to mandate that all city officers and employees undergo sexual harassment training at least once every three years, especially in the light of the findings of the city controller Rebecca Reinhardt's audit. After the controller's audit was released, Mayor Jim Kinney accepted the findings with an executive order where he announced a new series of policies, such as expanding prohibited conduct, mandating training, as well as a new online complaint form to make it easier for city employees to report misconduct. We reached out to the mayor's office to find out when the new policies would be implemented and to get the status of the new reporting tool, but we were unable to get a statement. But no, I'm hopeful that um, the recommendations will be implemented. Uh, they haven't been fully implemented at all at this point. There have been some changes made around the edges, but the, 
the recommendation for full centralization and for a disciplined schedule, um, and hopefully those changes will be made in the coming months. Rebecca says that if the changes aren't made, then she'll be right back out to talk about the issues again. Because this is important, and now that we especially have an audit that shows that we're not protecting our workers, we need to fix it. And, um, you know, we owe it to, to the people that, that work for the city to make sure people feel safe. Rebecca says that her office is working on a few other audits alongside her annual financial audit. We have right now performance audit going on on behavioral health. So the city spends about a billion dollars a year, over a billion dollars a year on behavioral health services. So mental health, addiction services, and it hasn't gotten a good look on if that money is being well spent in over 20 years. So that's an audit that's ongoing that'll be out um, in early 2019. And if people have ideas uh, for audits or ideas, you know, if they see any wrongdoing happening across the city, uh, I also have an investigations unit in the controller's office that follows up on leads and makes sure that there's not fraud, waste, or abuse at the city. This has been Ariel Taylor reporting for Philly Cam Voices.